Here's a little cuckoo flower. These are really important food and a place for particular butterflies and moths to the lay their eggs on. And the larvae or caterpillar need to have them to eat. So I want them to have that. And I've got a place where there's loads of it for the butterflies and moths, larvae, caterpillars, to live and thrive. Over here in the field, loads of bluebells, a great swathe of bluebells underneath this lime tree. There we go, it's focused. So underneath this lime tree is a swathe of lovely bluebells. Yeah, there's buttercups. There's grasses and clovers. Look at the clover. All around here. And happy dogs. Cow parsley under the trees. see cow parsley here under this uh, lime tree. Over there is the great oak field and all the buttercups you can see. This was an area when I was grazing the horses here it was very very dry so the recovery rate wasn't great but it's only a patch of area that all these buttercups are in. So if that was all dry when the horses were mob grazing it. Other areas, there's a lot less. There's hardly any buttercups here. So it depends on the weather as to what comes back out of it. Roly poly dogs. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, you all want attention. So the sheep won't come in here for a little while longer because the daffodils have to die back. But there's daisies, as you can see, dandelions. I love when dandelions get to this stage. I feel they're kind of punk when they're wet. They're kind of, they go punk, as it were. They've got their uh, headdress on. Woo! Don't, don't topple me now. I'd prefer not to be toppled. But you can see the trees are all looking well. The ash and the beech are not quite coming out, nor the oak, the oak is just coming out. So this is a lime tree. That's an oak tree. The, all of those, those are horse chestnuts. That's a horse chestnut that's not looking so well. But, uh, and that's a big ash tree there. And over here we have uh, alder trees. Oh, and look, another one of these. And it has a hoverfly on it. You can see hoverfly. The hoverfly is seeing this as food potentially. It's a rather beautiful hoverfly that looks like a wasp. It's not a wasp. Happy dogs. Anyway, here are my alders. There's a mixture of spindle. Rowans, oaks, there's an oak tree, a rowan, a spindle, a horse chestnut, a rowan. These are all grown from seed. Or the oak and the, sorry, the oak and the horse chestnut are grown from seed. The spindle and the rowan I was given as slips. And I've planted them in here amongst the alder. And there's more of them over here. all fenced off temporarily until they get to a particular mature age and then I will be able to uh, take the fence away 
and the sheep can graze in under them. Isn't that right, Pop? As you can see, this line, whoo, I tripped in that hole. I wasn't looking where I was going. <laughs> this line here of daffodils was planted by my grandfather when the mains water came in. So we know where the mains water comes up to the house is on this line, this route. So it's kind of an annual reminder of where the mains water is. You never want to plow there. Look, more of the cuckoo flower. And there's more down there. But look at what's happened over here. You can see, you can see scatterings of it here. I'm trying to encourage it because it's a really important, this is a really important plant for butterflies and moths as well as pollinators because it's a food plant for the young. And I think this is, in recent years, people have forgotten about the food plants for the larvae and the eggs. So, I collected seeds and look at all the cuckoo flower. Isn't that magnificent? I mean, huge amounts of cuckoo flower. Look at that. These are spindles around it, but this is a huge batch of cuckoo flower. And it's really, really important for the pollinators. And more people should understand that you need the cuckoo flower. You need to feed the baby butterflies and baby moths. You can't just feed them the pollen that the adults eat. You need to have locations for them to lay their eggs, for them to grow on and reproduce because what the butterfly eats is not what the caterpillar eats. And I think we've got to get more of that out in the public that if you want to reproduce, you have to, have to have the food for the babies. Food for the baby butterflies, the baby moths is really, really important. So over years, I've collected seeds and I throw them in here. These are in this bed here. I have, this is a cherry tree that I planted, transplanted, sorry, transplanted this cherry tree, but there's spindle, cherry trees, rowans, oaks, uh, a few ash, and then the understory, I've been sowing all kinds of things. There's yarrows and daisies, and as you can see, the cuckoo flower. So constantly trying to increase the plant biodiversity here. Here you can see loads of daisies, not daisies. What are those things called? Those are all um, dandelions. God, my head. Look, the Gilda Rose is flowering. Gilda Rose is a very important plant for food in the winter, the berries. So, yeah, so planting here for wildlife food and shelter. This is kind of like a belt of all kinds of food and berries and nuts and all these kind of things. And then here you can see this is a, an oak tree. This oak tree is the same age as my niece. I planted the acorn the year she was born. And so this is her oak tree.